Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Spirit Rebooted. This is episode 3, Responsibility. In earlier episodes, we covered the notion that we are part of the universal evolution, that nature is God, and having come from nature, we are also a part of nature. Also, nature has taken a gamble on human beings. By creating a creature capable of self-awareness and with the ability to choose, nature has created the possibility of said creature doing fantastic things with all the bounteous gifts she has saw fit to bestow upon us. But there is the risk of ego overpowering this creature, and nature runs the risk that her creation may themselves come to believe that they are God, which technically is true in a Taoist sense, but then they forgot that everything else is holy as well. The awakened man or woman has at least begun to question the true nature of, well, nature, or reality, and eventually it leads to a kind of realization that everything is connected and all our actions are connected. Now let's bring the conversation to you. What do you really want in life? Really think about it. You want to chill. Well, so does the universal organism and everything in it. And nature has set everything up so beautifully that everything is in place to do a certain role such that everything can chill to the maximum. But the evolved ape created by nature that has self-awareness now developed an ego. And the ego, believe it or not, only wants to serve itself and does not see past its own existence, and such is the present human condition. Well, this leads to a chilling imbalance in nature. See what our activities have done to the world. See what our activities have done to each other. Just so that the upper 1% can live at large, they have created a massive labor force, and this labor force keeps itself sustained and drugged and dumbed down with dreams of luxury and power. And these are things that we all strive for. Well, you have to realize that everyone is responsible for everyone. You are responsible for everyone else, and you are responsible for keeping the chilling balance in nature, the same way that everyone else is. Realize that the way that many of us live unintentionally imbalances the chilling in nature. That is because our comforts, many of the comforts we take for granted, come at the cost of the comforts of so many others. So, what do we do? It would be useful at this point to define chilling. Chilling is a state of consciousness that you want to prolong. Now, let's say you're chilling with some friends at your place inside decently comfortable environs smoking a bomber. Now, if I were to ask you, what would you want if you could have anything, what would you say at this point? I usually get answers to this question like, you know, they wish they had a mansion or some such luxury. Then I pose a simple question. If that wish were immediately realized, what would you do then? probably still be smoking with the same people, just in a different house. So don't you see that to do what you truly want, what truly makes you happy, you already have more than enough of those things. None of that other stuff, the mansion and whatnot, are really going to make you happy. And the sheer chilling imbalance that those luxuries inherently create are there for you to see. So now that you realize that chilling is your true aim, you realize that your chilling is not in isolation of anyone else's. Rather, it depends on their chilling. And now you'll realize that, being in a position of social and financial power, it is your responsibility to create an environment where everyone has an equal opportunity to chill. Well, it's easy for me to have these lofty ideals because I have all the comforts that I'm talking about. Well, I'm mainly talking to the educated modern middle class. We have always had the comfort and luxury to chill, even if we didn't appreciate it at times and wish we had more. Well, it's time to grow up and wake up. This generation is now poised to take the reins of the world, and all of us are responsible for those who are not in a position to have such lofty ideals. This is our place in society. Since we are in a position to begin restoring the chilling balance in all of nature, we must do whatever we can. For starters, that means turning a little bit away from our ego. Not completely. I mean, I'm not asking you to do too much. But take a little time out of your Facebooking and other nonsensing and dedicate maybe a couple of hours a week to gaining knowledge. You have the time and luxury for it. You have unlimited access to it through the internet. So go for it. Since we don't have to scrounge around for our next meal, we have the luxury to be able to philosophize. And if that mindset is spread amongst people like us, it automatically moves us to some kind of action. Now, this may mean making yourself a little uncomfortable. You might say, sure, the world is going to shit, 
but hey, you're not hurting anyone. You just have your few little vices, so we should leave you be. Because you're comfortable, you're complacent, and you don't want to do anything that might upset that order because, you know, God forbid that you might have to do a little bit of work or might have to give up on some of your luxuries. And all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belt and radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. It's time to get mad. It's time to say, okay, I get it. In order to chill, I have to do a little bit of work and so does everyone else. But what we have here is a system in which some people do a little work and reap most of the benefits, while others do a lot of work and get the short end of the stick. I'm not trying to lay a trip on you. I'm saying this because I went through all of this myself. It is the responsibility of the intellectually aware to take up the charge of correcting this chilling imbalance. Those of us who have the ability must do what they can for the teeming masses that do not have the ability. Ideally, it should be the most intelligent people to come forward and take the managerial roles. But that doesn't always happen. And sometimes the most able are forced to take far lower positions. Earl told me exactly what it was when he sent me down here. Dead end. A place to keep me from causing the board any more trouble. That is the nature of our society, where we value other things above merit. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. We seem to reward the behavior of an asshole. Now, it's hard work to turn this around, but that is your role in the cosmic machinery, to take on the hard task for the people who can't. Because your life is comfortable, you have to give back in some way. And I don't mean little donations here and there. I mean your minds and your hearts. I know you might say, yeah, well, that's a pain. And you know, you don't want to have to read all this stuff and gain knowledge and talk about heavy things with your friends. It's not who I am underneath. But what I do, that defines me. Look at Batman. Did he just say, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna go and live the rest of my life doing whatever I want, going to parties, banging whoever I want, and being a general prick? No, he said, It's not who I am underneath, but what I do, that defines me. And he gave all of his mind and money and body to this cause of making the world a better place. He was in a position of great wealth, and he used that without any thought of self-profit for the greater good. And he saved Gotham from physical and moral destruction like three times. Well, you don't have to put on a cape and go fight crime. But yes, you have to not be lazy and just do your best. This might mean anything. It might mean just talking about things or writing about it if you have a talent for that or making a mashup of videos and movie clips and putting a voiceover on it. Ooh. Whatever you can do, you just do your best. Or maybe you have some skill like engineering or computer programming or architecture. Or you can use these skills to help conceptualize sustainable solutions to the planet's problems. But the very first step is realization. Realize what you truly need to make you happy. What happiness really is. And if you need to spend your mental and emotional energy chasing all those things that you know you used to think brought you happiness. Because before you can begin to take responsibility for others, you first have to take responsibility for yourself. Whatever you can do, you just do your best. Then realize that this same state needs to be afforded to everyone. Because we are all supposed to be supporting each other in nature. Just the way nature supports us. Remember the Vedic Hindu society where everyone just did their role? Well, your role as the privileged middle class intellectually elite is to spread the good word. And the good word is that you are responsible for yourself and then everyone else. And sure, that does take a little bit of work. But if all of us do that little bit, it adds up to something great. It actually does. I'm not kidding. So while in your thoughts you must be like the dude, in your deeds you must be like Batman. And of course, you can have as much fun along the way as you want, which you do anyway. You don't have to give up on the iPad or the MacBook and the Nikes, but perhaps you will approach the universe and all its inhabitants in a more respectful, loving, nurturing way. If everyone realizes that they are responsible, we slowly automatically align ourselves with the cosmic machinery. And then nature's grand plan, whatever it is, will start to unfold and fulfill itself. We are all connected by spirit, 
And I don't mean in an airy fairy kumbaya sort of way. I mean there is actually spirit connecting us. But this involves recognizing and taking the responsibility you have for nature. Because nature has already done her part. She has created the galaxies and the solar systems and the planets and plants and animals and all that supports your life. And through creating human beings has allowed us to make all of this cool shit. But we have allowed ourselves as a species to overrun the planet. This is where the intellectually elite have to come in and say, we have to do something guys. And this might mean giving up on some of your luxuries, but again, re-examine it. You already have what you need to be happy. You have the material comfort to reach a blissful state of mind, and that material comfort also allows you to pontificate on these things. That comes with the responsibility to use it wisely, and as far as possible, for the good of everyone.